Hi, folks, and welcome to the online ministry of First Assembly of God, located at 407 Fort Street, Mendon, Louisiana, my hometown. Roll, tide, roll, and go Apaches. We're glad that you've joined us and hope that this uh, brief devotion will at least get your morning started off in the right direction. We want to spend our day. We can't quit work. I understand that. Everybody got to make a dollar. I understand that. Uh, but we want to put our day in the right frame and the right start off with the wonderful Word of God. So let us pray. Father in heaven, how we love you and praise you and bless your holy name, Jesus. You are worthy of praise in the tongues of men and the tongues of angels. I say it every week, not out of habit, but out of declaration. You are, Lord Jesus, worthy. And I'll be so glad when you are king, you are crowned, you are ruling and reigning over that which you've created, over that which you died to redeem when you are king of all kings and Lord of all lords. Come and exercise your lordship over me, Lord Jesus. God, anoint me to speak. Let it not be my words, but your words. And Lord, ignite it in the fire of the Holy Ghost and let it burn into my heart and into the hearts of the listeners. And I pray you would do it, Lord, in Jesus' name, for there's no name above that name. Amen and amen. Well, we pick up today uh, where we left off last week, Acts chapter 17 and verse 29. And since this is true, we shouldn't think that God, we shouldn't think of God as an idol designed by craftsmen from gold or silver or stone. God overlooked people's ignorance about these things in earlier times, but now he commands everyone everywhere to repent of their sins and turn to him. We must stop here and examine this scripture. We must examine the great change that happens during, during this scripture. God overlooked people's ignorance about him and about serving him in earlier times. But look after the first comma. It says, but now he commands everyone everywhere to repent of their sins and turn to him. If they were ignorant about it to start with, how can, they, how can they still be held accountable afterward? What happened? Well, Jesus came to planet earth. Jesus came here to be not only our sacrifice, the worthy lamb, the blemish-free lamb, pure and holy and righteous in every way, but also he came here and lived a life among us, showing us how a person should live in order to please God. A life of holiness, a life of sanctification, turning and, and away from wicked ways, but embracing wicked people. Why did he embrace wicked people? You know, that was one of the charges that the church people, the, the CPs went after him with. Said you ate food with them. You were with, with publicans. You, you eat with sinners. You, you do all these things. But what is Jesus doing? He's loving them. He's showing them how much he cares. How much he cares. And folks, that is true. They don't care they, they don't, they don't, people could care less about what you have to say until they know. They won't receive your message until you have loved them, until you have lived a, a life of Christian love up against them, agape love, not conditional love, agape. That's unconditional love. So the people in your family, you should never be at the outs with them. You may get mad at them, but you need to get a ladder and get over it. People at work, same thing. Well, they're not my family. I don't have... Yes, you do. You are Christ's ambassador. You are the witness. You are the, the preacher that God has put in your family's life. You're not the pastor, but you're the preacher. And at work. It doesn't matter where you work, what kind of work you do. You, you, you're never going to work totally and completely alone. And our job, they're not going to care what comes out of our mouth until they've seen what comes out of our heart. And so 
Now he commands everyone everywhere to repent of their sins and turn to him. He cannot justly hold them accountable except they are unignorant anymore, except that they have become learned. They become knowledgeable that Jesus, the Son of God, leaped over the guardrails of heaven and came to this earth to live in front of them and, and, and be a great example to them and also to die for them and be a sacrifice for them. Look, we are responsible for making them to know the good news of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, I'm not called to preach. Yes, you are. Preaching is living and speaking the message of the gospel. You're not called a pastor. I'm called a pastor. There's not that many pastors relative to the preachers. But to the born again, every born again person is a preacher. So wherever you go this week, wherever you go next week, wherever you go for the rest of your life, understand you, are, you cannot be bashful and shy. You don't have to be loud and bold, but you cannot re withhold the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Why? Because you're going to be held accountable. Yes, they'll go to hell, but don't think, well, it's all on their head. No, God said he would charge us with not telling them, with not letting them know that judgment is coming. Last verse for today is 31st verse. For God has set a day for judging the world with justice by the man he has appointed. And that man he proved to everyone who this is by raising him from the dead. That's the Lord Jesus of Nazareth, who is God the Son, the Son of God, the Son of Man. Understand, folks, we have a job to do. I'm not telling you to quit your employment. I'm telling you we have a job to do. We take the, that old song. Oh, man, that was a great hymn. I love it. It says, take the name of Jesus with you, child of sorrow and of woe. It will, it will joy and comfort give you. Take it then where you go. <coughs> Folks, know that that precious name, the name of Jesus, is to be interwoven in our conversation, interwoven in our actions and how we live. When we hit crisis mode, where do we go? What do the kids see? What does the spouse see? What do the neighbors see? What do the people at work, what do they see? When we hit crisis mode, what do we do? I'll tell you the first thing we need to do. We need to pray. We need to pray. They need to know us to be people of prayer. And if they don't know that, they're not going to know anything else. But you know what they'll eventually do? If you keep living at it in front of them, they'll start coming to you with prayer requests. Even though they may not be born again, They'll start. And little by little, listen, this, the fruit is harvested in an instant, but it takes a long time to come to the place of ready for harvest. So you do your part. There's some that sow seed, there's some that waters, there's some that cultivates the earth, but all of us, to the glory of God, all of us have our part in being the ambassador of Christ and working that there be a harvest in the future to the glory of the name of the Lord Jesus and to the rescue of those that not long ago we were just like because we were unsaved too. Hey, I've gone long this morning. Please forgive me. Let's say a prayer. Father, as we go through our week, God, let us be ever conscious, ever conscious of the people around us. We don't have to target anybody, but we sure need to live the life of Christ in front of them to speak the words of Christ to them and to be loving unconditionally to all those people that you put in our path. Let us do our part, whether it's, whether it's plowing the field, whether it's sowing the seed, whether it's watering, whether it's coming back and cultivating again or bringing the harvest and putting it in the, into the, 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 the larder. But God, let us do our part that the ignorant know and Lord, that they will know the joy of sins forgiven as we do. I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Folks, y'all have a great week. God bless you and goodbye.